In this video, we'll be showing you how to transfer data from Snowflake to Microsoft SQL Server. Let's dive in. We'll start our video off inside of Snowflake and show the data that we're going to transfer from Snowflake over to Microsoft SQL Server. Um, you can see we're just going to do a select star from this uh, Snowflake example data orders table here, and we're just going to take the first 10 rows. Um, you can take as many rows as you want, uh, but just for our example, just to save some time, we're just going to take over 10 rows. So let's pop over in the shipyard and show how we can do this. Um, so inside of Shipyard, the first thing we want to do is we want to bring that data in from Snowflake. So we have a store query results as a CSV. Uh, so we'll click that. We can name the vessel store query results as CSV here. And we just got to fill in our uh, input data here that is found in the authorization guide that popped up when I clicked on the uh, blueprint. Uh, so fill in all these values here. Password, account name, warehouse base schema again i'm going to grab that query and then like i said i'm just going to limit it to 10 just to save us some time here um, and then local file name um, i'll name this snowflake data.csv here um, and then we want to include column names as headers um, also important to note that for every vessel inside of shipyard so our vessel here uh, we can set up email notifications for any error or any completion of an on-demand run, as well as guardrails for number of retries, time between the retries if it fails, um, and then a runtime cutoff as well. <clears throat> so this first vessel is uh, set up and good to go. So now this will have our data from Snowflake into Shipyard. So now we need to take this data from Shipyard into Microsoft SQL Server. So we're going to click on this plus sign, add our vessel here. I'm going to search for Microsoft SQL Server and then upload CSV to table. I'm going to click that, which is going to bring up another vessel for us. Um, so we're going to upload CSV to table here. Okay, so then we just want to input all of our Microsoft SQL Server information. So our host there, the port, our username, our password, uh, our database. We just have our test database set up here. Um, you know, you can, you can bring in extra URL parameters if you need them. Uh, the folder name we don't have, uh, we have an exact match or regex match. If you want to bring in more than one file, you can do a regex match to bring them all in. Um, but our file name is snowflake data.csv and then the table name. So this is the table name inside of Microsoft SQL server. So I'm going to name this snowflake data, and then you can have this append replace or add data only if it's empty. Um, so it looks like we're good to go here. Um, so we need to go ahead and connect these two vessels together and based on a success. So if this one is successful, it'll start the second vessel. And so the last thing we need to do before we run our vessel here, or our fleet, I'm sorry, is name our fleet. So we can name it Snowflake to Microsoft SQL Server. Okay, so we're good to go here. So we can click Save and Finish on the bottom right hand corner of our screen. And this is going to take us over to a page telling us that the fleet has been created successfully, as you see here. And we can go ahead and click Run Your Fleet to start this on-demand run of this fleet. Um, so as soon as this starts running, it's going to take us over to our fleet log page, as you can see here. Um, so this fleet log page is going to give us information about that fleet run as it's happening in real time. Uh, so what you're going to see is a Gantt chart in the middle of the screen here that's going to show, if I hover over it, it's going to tell me the runtime if it's retried and the exit code, if it had one, uh, as well as the vessel name for each vessel. So as soon as this first vessel finishes, the second vessel will pop up on the Gantt chart. And then you can also see down here, we have a table um, outlining the same information if you'd rather see it in table form versus the Gantt chart. You can see our first vessel taking that data from Snowflake into Shipyard's already complete. I can click into that um, and it's gonna show us the, uh, it's gonna show us the Python output from, uh, from this vessel run. So you can see all the inputs that we put in as well as the password that we put in for Snowflake is hidden so that someone else from your organization can't pop into your logs um, and see that um, and see your password. Um, and then you can see that the file was successfully stored as Snowflake underscore data dot CSV like, like we wanted it to be. Um, so I'm going to go back and you can see that our, our second vessel, which was to upload that CSV to Microsoft SQL Server is also complete. I can also click into that and you can see the same information here and that it is successfully uploaded to snowflake underscore data that table. Um, so now I can bring up my Microsoft SQL server. Um, I can refresh our server, open up our tables here and you can see our DBO dot snowflake data. Um, I can query that and you can see that is the, that's the same data that came from snowflake that we saw at the very beginning of our video now inside of Microsoft SQL server. 
So in this video, we went over how to transfer data from Snowflake into Microsoft SQL Server. If you have any questions about this solution or any other potential solution, use the link in the description to set up a time to chat with our team of data experts. You can go to shipyardapp.com to start building powerful workflows just like this for free. Want to see us tackle more solutions? Check out these related videos.